So cardiac electrolytes, you need five electrolytes to both power and regulate the entirety of your heart function. You need sodium, chloride, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Those five chemicals, those five cations, are going to be what both produces the electricity that powers your heart and then regulates how it is distributed and how the cardiac muscle contracts or what we're going to for the purposes of this lecture called depolarize and repolarize. So contraction is depolarization in this context and relaxation is repolarization. Not because they mean the same thing, but because that's what's happening during each one. When the heart is contracting, it is depolarizing. And when the heart is relaxing, simultaneously the act of repolarizing is going on. So there are a couple of different ways you can explain all of these things. And there are different lecture slides and, and textbooks and stuff like that. They are all exactly right in how they explain them. The explanation I'm about to give you is also a correct one, but I'm going to do it from a bit of a different angle here. So I want you to kind of bear with me and I want to explain cardiac depolarization from beginning to end as opposed to different ways of looking at different parts of it. So let's start with the heart sitting at a state of complete rest. When the heart sits at a place that it is completely rested, potassium is your main electrolyte making this happen. So potassium combined with some proteins and things like that leaves the heart at a negative state. Negative 70 millivolts or 67 millivolts is kind of right there where it's at. So this potassium is flooded inside the cell and it's just sitting there doing nothing. Potassium in the body will keep the heart primarily negative and will make depolarization difficult if there's too much potassium in the heart. And you need to remember that because that becomes important later when you study hyperkalemia. Potassium plays a huge role in repolarization. So as the heart sits there with its cells flooded with potassium and nothing is happening, nerve impulses and things get uh, conducted, the heart's automaticity kicks in, and these channels begin to open up and they will push potassium out and allow sodium in. Now, when this shift happens, electricity is, is produced, for lack of a better word. The charge is changed. So what's going to happen is as the sodium floods into the cell and the potassium floods out, depolarization will begin. The heart will begin the process of contracting by pushing potassium out and pulling sodium in. Now at a certain point in this process where a lot of the potassium is left and a lot of the sodium has come in, the sodium channels are going to shut off and calcium channels are going to open. Calcium is a uniquely positive cation and is going to contribute the most to the heart's depolarization. So the charge has climbed up into the positive millivolts realm with the sodium coming in. And now it's going to jump a huge amount and go even further into positive realms because the heart has allowed calcium in. So just kind of to recap, it's sitting there full of potassium. It lets some of the sodium in, then it cuts that off and it picks it up from there with more calcium. Calcium is more positively charged. It takes it to the peak of depolarization. And when the calcium channels have let all the calcium in that they want to, the heart is fully depolarized. It is fully contracted. So it's resting and full of potassium. Then it begins to contract when sodium comes in and then it fully contracts when calcium has made its way in. And that is the heart beat. Immediately after this happens, the heart is going to open those calcium channels back up and let calcium out and let sodium back in. And then it's going to shut down the sodium channels and let potassium back in. So it's going to go up with calcium, or excuse me, it's going to go up in charge. It's going to depolarize with calcium, sodium, or excuse me, potassium, sodium, calcium. And then it's going to go back down with sodium and potassium, right? So it's going to descend the exact way it ascended. And then that is cardiac depolarization and repolarization all in one shot. So after it's fully depolarized, it lets the salt back in and then in turn lets the so, uh, salt is sodium and then in turn lets the potassium back in. And then you've got repolarization. This is how 
cardiac myocytes depolarize and repolarize. This is how they contract and relax. And you need to understand that because that's what you're looking for when you read an EKG. When you're looking at an EKG, you're looking for positive and negative electricity impulses. So whenever you are thinking on an EKG, when you're thinking of the heart, you need to think of it in terms of positive and negative electrical impulses because essentially that's all your EKG really is. Now, as this entire process happens inside the heart, all the muscles in the heart are contracting in the way that they're programmed to by running all these signals down a nerve pathway. And we're gonna call them nerves. They're really just conduction pathways. So they start out with the sinoatrial node, which you may have heard of, and then it moves down through the internodal pathways to the AV node. Then it'll move down from there through the bundle branches, uh, through the bundle of hiss into the bundle branches. And it's important, it's pronounced hiss like a snake, the bundle of hiss through the two main bundle branches and then out into the Purkinje fibers out on the outer edges of the ventricles. And this is the pathway that it follows. And you may need a picture for this, but I'm trying to do this in an audio lecture so you can listen to it on your way to work or whatever the case may be. So as you're moving through this entire process, the heart synchronizes and it beats in a certain order, okay? Now there's a lot more vocabulary and stuff that goes with this and you are more than welcome to learn all of it and you should, but I don't wanna branch off into things that can't be learned through the audio. I just wanted to give you a general idea of how that happens, okay? From here, we'll kind of move forward into some of the EKG stuff and some of the, the conduction and how it works and what's going on with that, okay?